when you go, can you turn the water off? And they go, oh, I don't know where it turns off, or it's behind the washing machine. This is one of those jobs where it's behind the washing machine. And as you can see, it's tucked right down there in the corner. Let's get a screwdriver in there and turn on the water feed. This is completely empty, so if it goes wrong and we have a bit of a leak, you'll be the first to know alongside me. So. There we go, we've got one on the nut. Alright oh, mate. Here he is. Sorry mate. Let me just shut that door. Right, shut the door because we can't show you what's out there. But we've come to fix a leak. The leak's done. Where is it? Show me. Down here, mate. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's always in. Right then, I got a phone call from someone a couple of days ago saying they had a very slight little weep coming from the back of their toilet. It was just running along the grout lines where the toilet sits on in their bathroom. So I said to them, not a problem, I'll get round there within the next couple of days, have a look, see if we can find out what's going on. So they got back to me, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Last night, had a phone call from the same person saying they had water coming through their kitchen ceiling and obviously we need something doing. I said to them, I should go straight out to it, have a look at it, they said, not a problem, we'll turn the water off. If you can get around in the morning, assess it and see what's gone on. And this is what's gone on. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. This video should be going out, if I've got my timings right with all my videos, it should be going out Easter weekend, either Easter Sunday or Bank Holiday Monday. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, but either way, hopefully some of you have had a few days off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, had a nice little break. As we all know, us as plumbers, we're never, never properly off work. There's always a call out, 24 hours, seven days a week, all that sort of stuff. People just ring us up. Um, if they've got an emergency and today's video is a prime example of that you'll see when you watch it but it's for a friend of mine a customer of mine who started out with a little small leak he rung me up Matt I've got a little small leak around the bottom of my pan could you come and have a look I said yeah give it a couple of days I'll get out to you that night he's rung me up to quarter to seven you know seven o'clock that night Matt, you, you know, can you come out? We, we've got a problem. There's water coming through the kitchen ceiling. I said to them, look, I'll come out now if you want. I said, what we'll do, we'll turn the water off, come out in the morning and see what it is. And this video is exactly what I was uh, uh, greeted with when I got there the following day. So it's quite an interesting one. I've never had it before. I can sort of see what could possibly have gone wrong. So let me know what you think when you're watching that. Also, hang on till the end because, ironically, there's another emergency call out at the at the end of this video so th funny enough that the emergency call out at the end of this video is part way through a job that i haven't showed you yet because i haven't uploaded the full start of this job so you'll see a bit of a sneak peek of a job to come at the end of this video so as always hit the like button hit the subscribe button drop me a comment below let me know what you think to the video let me know what you think um you would have done in the situation that i was greeted with on this job so yeah, as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon. So this is what's gone on. I've just got here, the water's already off. I just took the toilet out and took the back panel off just to see what was going on. And I've been greeted with this. So it looks like from first impressions is the bracket on the top has failed with the weight of the water that's in the cistern and the cisterns just collapsed and fell off. Whether it was just beginning to lean a little bit or it was just hanging on the back of the pan and the and the beads was running along the, the grout lines on the tiles, quite possibly, but this is obviously what's caused last night's issue. So it's still partly full of water. It's still got a little bit in it now. So I'm gonna get this all stripped out and um, get the bracket off. It's exactly what the damage is, but even though it looks a bit of a mess, hopefully it's not too bad a job to sort out. So, right, let's get this stripped out and see what's going on. Right, I've dried up round here as best I can. With the water off, what I'm going to do is undo the flexi off the bottom there and then um, 
hopefully lift this cistern out with the water in it and we can chuck it down the basin. So I don't want to move it or anything too much at the minute till I've got it all disconnected because I'm just dead conscious that it's all still full of water. I could get the aquavac out on it but as the water's off, right, that's the cold disconnected. Let's lift it out now. In fact, I've got the shower tray here. Let's close this door. There's not a lot of room in this bathroom, to be honest, but let's close this door and then we can lift that system straight into that tray. Yeah, with that out of the way, it doesn't look too bad. Let's um, let's have a look and see what's going on. So I've emptied the cistern into the shower tray and there's got these little lugs off the bottom of the clips here. These clips sit on that bracket and I think just because of the weight of it or whatever's gone on here, it's just failed and um, and ripped them, ripped them little lugs off. A bit strange, I've never seen that before, to be honest. Very odd. Right then, what we're going to do, we're going to take this bracket off. I'm going to go and get a new cistern, um, obviously with the new bracket. Uh, I've turned the water off on the isolation valve there. So what we'll do, we'll get the water back onto the house. Then we can go and pick them bits up and start sort of rebuilding. A, I want to get the water on to just make sure it was definitely that. There's no other issues anywhere else. I don't see there being, to be honest. Yeah, and then we can get a new replacement cistern and uh, go from there, start building it back up, hopefully. So this job, funny enough, has the probably the worst stop tap to get to. Uh, we do come across it now and again. You know when customers go, when you go, can I turn the water off? And they go, oh, I don't know where it turns off, or it's behind the washing machine. This is one of those jobs where it's behind the washing machine. And as you can see, it's tucked right down there in the corner. So this is a perfect job to fit one of those shore stops. If you haven't seen them, it's a little valve that goes after the stop tap. Uh, and it's a little valve that has basically a light switch, a light switch remotely fitted. So for instance, you could have the switch fitted up here. So if you needed to turn the water off, literally it's like that. Just flick the switch, water goes off and it controls the valve that is down under there. Now I've got one of those at home to fit. Um, so obviously you won't do it on this one at the minute because you want to get that toilet and that sorted, but this is a perfect job. I will mention it to the customer because it might be worth it for future proofing, um, just in case there's ever an issue, but yeah, they're always handy. So I'll do a video on that very soon. But for now, we've got the water back on. We've got the isolation valve for the system off upstairs. So the house is back on and they can just carry on now while I go and get the replacement system and get that sorted out. So I've been to Plum Base, picked up a new Roper Road system, concealed system to go in here. A slightly different bracket, which is, perfect because this one seems to have pulled out of the unit there so i've screwed this one in straight through the back straight into the wall so that's in position there and then with these systems it's a nice flush back being a flush back on it and having this board on the back of there means this system's not going to flap around so let me just put the camera here because i know full well these are a bit of a two handy job to fit so this is going to go in like so, up, and it just clips, and get it down onto them lugs, he says, there we go, down onto them lugs like that, and then that is absolutely solid on there, that's not going to go anywhere. So I've just put that in now, just to show you how easy it clips in, even though it's a little bit of a faff. Um, We've got enough room now for our uh, flush pipe and whatnot. Picked up a new flexible pan connector. People are going to probably come at me for this, but that was what was in. And the way it's got to come round and out to this point here, it's quite a way out. So that's what's going back in there. The other one's been in there and it was absolutely fine. So let's get this in, set in now, and start working from there about getting the pan in. Before we get away from this cistern, we also get a little securing nut that goes, let's see if I can get this in one go, now that the cistern is exactly where I want it, 
that goes just there. So there you go. That will screw in there and secure the front of the cistern to the bracket and hopefully, or it will, stop it doing what the other one did, which wasn't ideal, was it? So we've now got that secured to the bracket with that internal nut there. Like so. Right, let's crack on now. What I've got to do. So with the cistern in place now, we'll connect the flexi to the bottom, obviously going ever so steady because as we all know, they can sometimes cross thread. I have checked this flex is all right because it's always best to just keep an eye on them. So with that in place, we just give that a little nip up. They don't need to be massively tight. And then what we can do is get the water on at some point before we put everything back together. But what I want to do now is just set the flush pipe to come off the back of there and into the back of the pan. So with the flush pipe in position now, everybody has their own way of um, cutting flush pipes to suit toilets. So I always measure from the entry point in the pan to the floor, offer that into position and then cut the height there and then offer the pan back without the bung in and cut it to suit there. Loads of people do it loads of different ways. So you're probably gonna get to your own sort of way of doing it. There's no right or wrong, trial and error. You know, it's took me, uh, to be honest, sometimes I do it one way, sometimes I do it the other. So there's no sort of rhyme or reason to it. Got the flexi on there. What we're gonna do now is push the pan in, all in one, connect the flexi, give it a test. And I'm hoping we don't have to have it out again. I'm hoping with all that in and hopefully it all works and it's all fine, there's no issues, we don't have to have it out again. So what we'll do now, we'll ease this in. It's sort of pushing this in while getting that in, while getting that in. So there's a million and one things to do. So uh, I'll put the camera here. Hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of it, but obviously as the pan goes back, it's gonna, gonna cover it up a little bit. But, what, but the main sort of thing is to try and get this flush pipe cone into, into there. Some people put electrical tape around there to stop it moving about. To be honest, I've never really had an issue with that. So let's drop the pan to this point here where we can now move it around a little bit. There we go. I don't think you're gonna be able to see much more, but it's just about to go into there. So I'm gonna ease it into there put the, put the uh, flexible into there and get it all in in one. This is all in position now. Let's get a screwdriver in there and turn on the water feed. This is completely empty, so if it goes wrong and we have a bit of a leak, you'll be the first to know alongside me. So. Oh, there we go, we've got one on the nut. Fuck's sake. See if I can just get it. Yeah, we're all good on that now. Um, yeah, so there's me saying you don't need to over tighten it, but you need to tighten it up a little bit more than what I did, to be honest. So that's all good. Let's make sure that's tightened up underneath there. Wait for the water to turn off in the system. And then while we're waiting for that to fill up, let's connect them two tubes to the back of the plate. They connect onto the right hand side there and onto the front there. Two tubes out there, blue on the bottom, clear on the top. I've connected these two hoses just to the existing pneumatic push button there, ready to give it a test. So I think everything's all right. It's been sat in the system five minutes or so, just to make sure all the seals are okay, because it says here, obviously if you, if you tighten them up over what they come out of the factory, always the warranty. Right, let's give it a flush and see if we're all okay. Feel around, it's dry there, dry. You can see on the flush cone entry point. 
drill in the bottom of the Seems okay. Right, we'll let it fill up. We'll give it a few flushes, four or five flushes, just constantly one after the other, just to make sure everything's all right before we put the boards back in and begin building it back up. Right then, with a good few flushes now done on this toilet, I've pushed it into position, put the backboard in, put the button board in, and all we've got to do now is put in the two screws either side and then I'm going to reseal it round. So we'll get that done and then we'll give it a final wipe down. And then we can have a clear up in here and hand it back to the customer. But this is a prime example of just a, a normal jobbing job. These are the sort of jobs you get called out to. These are your bread and butter jobs. So whenever they come about, get in, get it done, get the customer happy, get the water back on for them. And no doubt it will then be a process of them using you all the time as your plumber because you've sorted bits out. So the phone's just gone and it is Scott, the builder that I do a lot of um, renovations for and extensions for. We're doing a little job over in Coventry, uh, which I filmed funnily enough, but I haven't put out yet. And um, there's some pipe work in the wall. Now I put the pipe work in the other week and Lee the labourer has been bored in the walls. Sod's law. He's drilled through a pipe or screwed through a pipe. So I need to shoot over there now, quickly sort this out for him. Um, I want to go over these speed ups. So I'm going to shoot over there now, get that sorted for him so they can carry on getting these walls done. But yeah, as I said, it's a job that I haven't shown you yet, but I think I was planning on being the next video. So we'll uh, have a little bit of a sneak peek of it. But yeah, let's get over there now and see exactly what he's done. All right, mate. Here he is. Sorry, Mark. Let me just shut that door. Right, shut the door. I can't show you what's out there, but we've hey, come to fix a leak. The leak's done. Where is it? Show me. Down here, mate. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's always him. Every time it's him. Yeah, let have it. Let's have a look. Bottom one. Bottom one? Yeah. Where? Down here? Yeah. Whereabouts? Mark, here. What are you applying to here? Ah, uh, sure ones here. Have you? No. Can I walk on that? Yeah. Oh no. Right. Oh yes, we can see it. Just there. Uh, so what are you doing? Just screwing that board on? Yeah. Okay mate, so I'll leave it with me. Okay, sorry about it. <clears throat> right, there we go. Tiny little screw hole there, if you can see it in the pipe. Just on that stud. Easy enough fix, we'll just cut that out put a, um, a press fit coupler on it and job done. So just go and get the press tool out, get a coupler and pop it on there. We'll be good to go. So real simple fix with this. All I'm gonna do, get my cutter, cut straight down the middle of where Lee's screwed through the pipe and then just press fit a coupler in there for those two bits. So yeah, dead straightforward. So right in the centre of where that hole is, we'll just put a cut for the pipe. So as that's cut there, it's completely removed where the hole is. So what we'll do, put the coupler on there, like so. Coupler on there, and just press it back together. Easy as that. There we go, a couple of pressed in, cap still on. We'll just shoot downstairs now, get the water back onto it, fill it back up. But as I said, this is a job that I've already filmed a bit of, but it's basically, this is a sort of bathroom area. It's gonna be a toilet down the end, toilet here, basin here. But that's on a video to come.